This is the front driveway side. First garden that went in. Oh, and this was the first garden that came out when the kids moved back. Rich and Chrissy it was wildflowers. It wasn't that great of a garden. It was hard to work. Really hard soil. It was the first one to come out, and now it's the home of the bus. They built a bus pad. They had gravel delivered, made it real firm so the bus wouldn't sink. But this garden looks really good this year. This was the first one that went in. It was uh, me, my husband, my daughter, and her husband. And it's beautiful this year. I put roses in two years ago. Interesting story behind these roses. And this is the first year they bloomed, but they're blooming really well. And when the kids moved back, they brought their climbing roses, and we added a trellis, which turned out beautiful. This wall re was replaced when the kids moved in. There was a leak leaking into the closet, and we had to remove all this everything. Like, there, you could see through the house. We removed everything and redid it. This used to be a store, party store. And this was the front door of the party store. Lots of interesting stories. Everywhere I've lived, actually. So beautiful. Climbing roses probably won't bloom this year. But on this corner is another rose. Came from the same plant. The vinca vines are really bloomy this year. Story behind the roses. I'll get to it. I'll go to where these roses started. I kept trying to move the roses because they were too shaded. And every time I moved the rose, the rose that I moved took and the old rose would come back up. So I tried again. Same thing. The new rose took, the old rose came back up. And it is blooming, so we'll walk over there. These hostas came from our old place. They've been divided so many times. They're everywhere. So a lot of family and a lot of different homes are in this garden. The first variegated hosta came from a family member. It's my daughter's favorite. And it's moved think maybe four times quite a history behind it um, the gardens are connecting you know I'm real crazy about everything flowing everything has to flow connect in some way and it feels good my daughter calls it magical yesterday I was calling it paradise it just it had such a beautiful feeling. Not just look, but it felt good. Oh, we finally finished this. The boys finished this yesterday. Um, I used up all the compost, moved it. I have some left, but it's in buckets. And we were able to use the last of the mulch and get this area finished off. Beautiful. Oh, we'll walk to the rose. The original rose gift from my husband and it is blooming and it is partly shady partly sunny here and I tried to move this several times and it just keeps giving me more roses and it's a pretty color burgundy so everything flows everything connects except for the back I am slowly taking what's left of the um, duck and chicken coop where my old garden was, which flowed all the way across the yard. I'm slowly taking them out and moving them to the front, which got destroyed during the re rebuilding of this garden. They enlarged it. To enlarge it, they had to bury my old garden. So the vegetable garden was smaller and there were flowers all around it. And it flowed, and it was beautiful at times. 
and I cried through fit. I'm over it. I'm rebuilding it though. Took echinacea and hollyhocks out of my shade garden. They had reseeded there from fall garden cleanup. So echinacea here. There's echinacea on the back of the fence. Echinacea over here and by the greenhouse. So this is, they took, and I'm gonna put them in the ground soon. And the hollyhocks went over here. This garden has the same problem every year. These things reseed and they're really tall. And then in the middle, there's not much going on and it just doesn't look right. So I've been moving some of these shorter things to the outside and I put the hollyhocks in the middle. So that'll be perfect. Hollyhocks are really tall and fat and it'll make this garden look right. Grass is green. Everything looks lush and beautiful for a little while. Once we lose the grass from the heat and drought later in the year, the garden doesn't photograph as well. So in my theory or my uh, obsession of all the gardens connecting and flowing well, this one was cut off from the shed to start. But we are reconnecting it more this way. It's coming towards me instead of across the road. So it still flows. It still looks beautiful. And we're still going to garden in the chicken coop and duck area. There are lots of ways we're finding to make this space look good. We added a lot of umbrellas because it's so sunny and so hot back here. And we have a lot of roosters. We hatched eggs, you don't know what you're going to get, but we ended up with six roosters and one hen. And the heat just makes them grumpy and more aggressive. So we added a bunch of umbrellas, which we already have because my daughter does resale and they were sitting behind the shed. So in order for this to really photograph well, I'm going to have to finish this when this is gone. This is what's left. This is a partly sunny spot, so I've got these transplants, African daisies, where they can get some sun. I'm not going to move them in full sun. Oh, one of the hollyhocks went here. I want tall here, so we got hollyhocks, sunflower, and echinacea. It's going to be tall here. And it, we're still working on it. Work in progress, all gardens are. So it is connecting this way with these little additions. I seen it when I filmed last time. I didn't realize the garden was already starting to connect a different way. So I'm back to myself. The garden's beautiful. we should go over and see the ducks. It's overcast. The grapes here. We're going to train them up and over the fence. See, we are gardening here. I've got my hibiscus tree. <coughs> Excuse me, which lives in the house in the winter. I love that tree. We're gardening on the actual coop. And then we have these hanging baskets, which I found the baskets on the side of the road. I'll stop pick stuff up can reuse things. My old table, which I found on the side of the road, has a plant that flowers. There's a pot back there that the chickens haven't destroyed. They can't really reach it well. There's a garden back there and a tire that me and my son-in-law built last year when the tire blew into the yard. And this, I'm going to start moving these. Oh, what are they called? with a P. But these I'm moving. I'm going to cut these in half and move these in front of the vegetable garden to rebuild the front. I have things over here. I, it, you have to be careful what time of year you move what. So these have to be moved after they bloom or they won't bloom and they might not bloom next year because I moved them. It's kind of 50-50 shot there. And then some of these things 
This isn't blooming yet, but it's really big, really tall. I don't know the name of it. It came in the wildflower garden, which is usually a mix of seeds, so I don't know everything that comes up. But it's big and beautiful, and I'm going to have to move that one next spring. Or after it's totally done blooming. There's a few other things in there I want to move out, move to the front. Where are the ducks? This tree needs to go in the ground. It's a pussy willow, but it's a decorative one. Here they are. Nap time. Maybe someday I'll be able to get the fish and film. Plants are doing really well in here. So happy we could save this garden. So it is flowing all the way across the yard from here. Everything's back to good again.